Well, it, 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 uh, it doesn't explain how she got him right. to put himself in the position where he can be spot, killed. Yes. Hello, and here we are, Britain's History, it's Ross, and I am in Caer Leon in Newport, and um, I've got the wonderful local guide here, uh, Richard Davis, who's going to tell you all about some of these places. And already I found out more than I realised. So. Dr. Russell Rees, who's had um, come from Carmarthen. Uh, he was trained as a doctor in London, and he came and settled in Killian and became the GP in Killian. Right. Well-known character. Russell was a, a great enthusiast of our theory and legend. Well, not so much our theory and legend, but uh, Welsh legend or Welsh history. Yeah, yeah. And he was very knowledgeable. He had a great deal of He's a Welsh speaker, and he had a great uh, uh, knowledge of Welsh history. And he thought that Cleon needed an injection of Welsh cultural cultural heritage. So he started to create this kind of Arthurian Welsh cultural centre with some shops and a cafe and he employed local sculptors and started to have sculptures commissioned from Mabinogai stories. Right. Yeah. And of course legends of Arthur. Russell had bought this bit of land and he started to do it up as an arts and crafts centre. And so we're going to go and have a look at the Furham. The Furham, right, yeah. there's the sign. So we come into Caerleon. Furham, there you are. Yeah, see, right, so here's some of the... So you're saying the big face, that's Russell, yeah? That's Dr. Russell Reese. Yeah. And with uh, Manor, Manor Wadden and the Mice. And down below it is Sir Terry Matthews, who was a friend of... Oh, OK. Russell. Of course, <laughs> the man who set up the golf course and yes, everything, yes. yes. They were friends. Ah. Yeah, Terry Matthews would be a very good person to get involved in this, wouldn't he? Nice guy. Yeah, she's great. And, and, uh, that's, uh, and you can see all sorts Merlin. of Mabinogi stories. Yeah, there's Merlin, look on his Merlin's, chair. Merlin's from, he had all these frogs commissioned. Yeah. And Fantastic. Oh, I love that. The, the idea where they were like, um, they were the, the seats around the round table. Clu Clau Griffiths. Oh, yes. The story from the Malinogion where he's turned into an eagle and uh, his his foot maiden is uh, is trying to have him killed but to kill him because he's a magical being you have to have one foot in water one foot inside a building one foot outside a building and he's got to be kneeling on a goat and he can only be killed with a spear that's been fashioned on a Sunday that took a year to fashion, wow. made out of holly. So her lover is throwing the spear and it doesn't kill him, it just wounds him. So he turns into an eagle, flies away and comes back later and reaps his revenge on both of them. I think, I think he right. sets his hunting dogs on her. <laughs> nice, nice. See, I can see the eagle at the top, it's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, it's a wonderful bit of sculpture. These sculptures were done mainly by a, an artist called um, Ed Harrison. Wonderful, he lives in West Wales, wonderful sculptor. Well, it, 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 uh, it doesn't explain how she got him right. to put himself in the position where he can spot. be killed. Yes. Yes. It's the only way he can be killed, he's a magical being. But um, if you look under there, and you look at... People are going to have to come to, come to find out, aren't they? <laughs> you look under there, you can see what she's doing, kneeling <laughs> over him to hold him in that position. <laughs> she's persuaded him to stay, let's just put it that way, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see you made local knowledge for it, wonderful. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Some things don't change, eh? No. So here's Morgan Le Fay. Widely considered to be the world's most wicked woman. <laughs> Faye means fairy, but not the tints and toad variety. This is a fairy of poisoned apples and soaked, blood soaked spinning wheel spindles, a witch. <laughs> Marvellous. <laughs> he loved a bit of blood and gore. <laughs> Tristan and. Oh, I can never pronounce it. It's old, yeah, I know. It's older. Tristan and it's older. Yeah. And uh, 
he's, he, he's obviously in love with her because he's licking her thigh. <laughs> As you do. As, As you, you do, do if you're in love with a, a beautiful woman. <laughs> Not so keen she is, all she's doing is looking in the mirror, sir. So. Yeah, well, you know, she's a great beauty, isn't she? <laughs> Russell certainly believed in strong, independent women, sir. Yeah, he's got a bit of sense of humour as well. Yeah, a great sense of humour. He likes Caridwen and Taliesin. Yeah. Yeah, go on, remind me of the story, I don't know that one too well. Oh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's one of the read. most... Well, you've got a, you've got a nice little... Um, yeah, you can uh, pause that, hopefully, people have a look yourself. Yeah, and they can read it themselves. It's a wonderful story. They're all wonderful stories there, aren't they? Yes. Well, I think I think it's the. Uh, well, it's that's another Ed Harrison. has got his name on that one. It's kids. where um, the Taliesin's uh, inspiration comes from. Taliesin is born in that story. Russell collected things like that bull and 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 the first arts festival we had in Killian. Because you were one of the artists, weren't you? you no, were, no, 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 oh, no. Oh, but you're not shop. I had an art shop, yeah. But I was I helped all. I helped. Uh, not organise it, but I, I helped with it. promoted a bit, so okay, go yeah, on. Yeah. I helped with it, I got some of the wood for the sculptures. The first one we done, we had 10 sculptors from all over the world, and they had a theme, and they got paid a thousand pound each for for sculpting their log in the field down Brilliant. there. Brilliant, yeah? what a great idea. Yeah, and some of them worked in stone, and one of the sculptors done that, an Italian guy, I forget his name, but he done that stone sculpture for Russell as well. It's all quite provocative, aren't they, when you start thinking about them? Some of them, yeah. And the Bran the Fairfaced. Bran the Fairfaced. From the story uh, Branwen, the daughter of Cleese from the Mabinogai. Yes. The first story of the Mabinogai, which uh, the scholars say is Bronze Age. Um, it's an old, uh, what's this table? I don't know, what's that then? It's a, it's a butcher's block. Oh, it's okay. For, it's for slaughtering meat. See the channel for the blood to run out? Nice. It makes a nice table, doesn't it? It's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting, they got that there. Oh, d seven That's a great little combination of things there. Seven dead, deadly sins left. So I'll just read the sign so we can look at this. Uh, although using early Christian teachings to protect followers from their basic human instincts, the seven deadly sins do not exist in the Bible. We do not advocate complacency, however. Be warned, if you're feeling at all guilty. These are the cardinal sins, they all merit damnation. See, I'm quite curious about it, could that... David Peterson? Who's done this? Sorry, I do apologise. Quite a well-known well sculptor in Wales. David Peterson. Yeah. David Peterson, there you are. What's more interesting about to me, you've got... Clearly that's a Sutton Hoo mask on there. That's a Sutton Hoo helmet. Yeah. And then the shield is the cross of... That could be the cross of Arivagus, you know? The one that Joseph yeah. Arimathea gave to the first Welsh king. Yeah. And you got the Welsh... Uh, well, like dragon wings to me in the background. And you got the flame here of the dragon pot. So it seems like he's jammed a load of um, interesting symbolism. And then you got like a fat cowboy lying on the ground, which I don't understand what that is. I have to think about that. That's probably sloth. Well, I understand or the greed. seven sins, but I'm just looking, he's, he's woven in a lot of British imagery here, if you look closely. And he's even put this on the, on the, yeah. It'd be interesting to speak to him when he got the, because that to me, I spent a lot of time looking at certain who stuff, and that's, that's, what they laugh and they call a Vendel helmet, which makes it Germanic, even though there's only a few of them ever found, and most of them are in Britain. <laughs> Work that out. <laughs> there's the world's biggest love spoon with the dragon on it, and there's the fighting guys. Some sort of tree of knowledge or something, I don't know what that is. That's um, Spirit of the Forest. Spirit of the Forest, thank you. Look at that for a love spoon, wow. Uh, Ed Harrison, Carter. Ed Harrison, yeah, he's Cardiff a... Castle, I think you've done most of it. And then he wrote here. Fantastic, brilliant, not an easy thing to move around, is it? No, there's out of one piece of wood. One piece of wood, that's the whole thing. Yeah. If you're not aware of Welsh love spoons, they have to be carved from one piece of wood. And uh, Richard know better than me, but I think the story is that if you, if you, uh, when you're in love, you, you, you handmade it yourself, didn't you? Yeah, they, they, and the more valleys, elaborate your skills, the better kind of thing, wouldn't it? Welsh valleys, uh, uh, miners often would... Uh, yeah, well, in recent times, isn't it? And each, each symbol means something. Yeah, mean, this is number of children, I think, isn't yeah, it? The number balls? of children and the chain is how, how, how long what married life love feels is, like. and then oh, the heart and that. <laughs> I, not, thought the I, I thought the chain represented married. It probably is. <laughs> And um, one, of the, one of the others here. Oh, am I going to be cheeky now? See if these move. They do. Fair play. That's good. Good craftsmanship there. A beautiful tree. Tulip tree. 
What an amazing park. Oh, there's more rude stuff down the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's not rude. Not rude, okay. Well, this is from the first arts festival. Human form, let's go with that. As a project I did. Brilliant. We got, we got everyone to paint a square. They could paint whatever they want. And uh, we charged them a quid each to raise funds for what the festival. What a great idea. I mean, it was it? part of it. There's a, there's a lot missing. This this made a huge, like 20 it's foot cross of a face of a druid. They are. For the sake of two pounds now. Two pounds now is. Me and Louise. Well done, you. Oh, they are. It's Richard. No, but based on an idea, we, we orchestrated it. Yeah, we're doing it, so I'm at this. Yeah, fan I like that. Absolutely fantastic. And I tell you what, what a bargain if the work's going to be on display like this. Yeah, it's been there a long time. Yeah, exactly, you're getting good value for your two quid, so aren't you? 2004, that was done. That Every was time you come back for the last almost 20 years, you can see, there's my one, look. The first arts festival in Cleo And people come back, won't they? It's a bit like, yeah, yeah. you know, in local newspapers, like putting yeah. photographs of school things, yeah. so you know all the parents are going to buy I've it done a few. I've done a few murals based on this idea. Oh, I've that's got, fantastic. I, I've done one in Cumbran, I've done one in um, Gandifer. Oh, Gandifer? <laughs> Don't get me on that one. You like this? Fans will love this sculpture if I can find it, but it's a, there it is. See that? A blue dragon, interesting. See that little sculpture there? Oh, how there. I wonder if you've noticed that. Go on, yeah. Nobody would hardly notice it. If you look at it carefully, you can see it's a rugby ball. Oh, yes, I can see a pair of hands, hands now, yes. Yeah. Just about. Well, what's interesting, it comes from Lantanum Abbey, yeah? And it date is dated about 30 years before the invention of rugby in England. <laughs> <laughs> There's a cheeky one, isn't it? <laughs> That's lovely, isn't it? Forget your web, Ellis. <laughs> we got, uh, we, got we got stone, stone cold evidence of Plantar and Abbey of someone playing rugby. <laughs> Arthur and uh, Mordred, is it? Mordred. Yeah, yeah, he's Mod Mordred, yeah, or Mudred in Welsh, yeah. isn't it? Mudred. So this represents, the, of course, they've been. The armour's been made a bit sort of medieval, isn't it? They've gone with the old. Uh, look at that. Yeah, it's from the romances. The yeah, story, yeah, from the. Oh, I'm trying to his name. I think mine's gone blank. Tennyson and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, before Tennyson, what was his name? Tennyson. It's, it's ten Mallory. Mallory, yeah. that's his name. Mallory and Tennyson wrote yeah. the idols of the kings hearing for Lee underneath. He, he, yeah, well, he, he stayed, he in, the, Wales, stayed he? in the pub there, didn't he? But that's the one, is I knew he stayed yeah. in the pub. I didn't know the Hanbury. That that's the Hanbury, that's a lovely pub. Hanbury Arms. So that depicts the Battle of Camban. You were talking about castles earlier being built, built by the Welsh, weren't you? Well, a huge Welsh castle in Cleve. Yeah. So where's that then? Well, there's not much left of it now. There's well, I know, you don't like... There's a, there's a tower. <laughs> oh, that's how, yes, yes. On the side of the Hanbury. But um, uh, the Lords of Cleon, before they were Lords of Cleon, they were the Kings of Gwent. Mm, mm. So you have um, uh, uh, Yorif. Yes. Yorif was uh, uh, the last Lord of Cleon was Huel, and his father was Yorif. And Yorif fought the King of England several times over Cleon. He got kicked out of his castle here in Cleon and then the King of England would march on to Ireland with, doing his campaigns with his 20,000 troops like you know and then by the time he came back Yorof was back in his castle <laughs> <laughs> and this this went on for quite a while like you know. More than three tries for that Welshman yeah. And then eventually, um, eventually the King of England thought well perhaps I'll knight his son and make him a Lord of Cleon and then he can pay homage to me and I won't have to fight this Yorif every time. Diplomatic minutes. solution, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Yorif was quite, quite a boy. He, he, he killed some other Norman lords in, in Abergavenny area. There's a, there's a site of an ambush of a, a Norman lord up in Abergavenny and uh, that was Yorif because that lord, uh, he was the Duke of Gloucester at the time, I think, killed his first son. Right, right. So he had revenge on him. He yeah. Like so, see, Russell bought these plaques, yeah? Yeah, they're like ceramics plaques. He bought them in Cardiff somewhere, someone had made them, and they were in a hell of a bad state of repair, yeah? So, um, beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, uh, Russell's daughter, uh, um, Re, she, she commissioned me to repaint them. Oh, you repainted those? Fantastic. Yeah, so I, I put some tidy acrylic. Yeah, yeah, they've really come, off, come to life, haven't they? Hiya, oh, Raphael Eva. And there's another one of uh, the right. thrones, there's Guinevere's throne, yeah. or Guinevere. And as he said, yeah, he, had a, he created a round table, wasn't he? So Mordred, Mordred. I'll say one, another one of the thrones as well is here. Yeah, Lancelot. 
Would you use the the round table, Arthur, mates? Guinevere, Guinevere. Yeah, Merlin. yeah, brilliant. Okay. They're based on the based on the on the romance. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you've got two kinds of Arthurian history, and you've got the yeah, historical yeah. Welsh Arthurs, and then you've got the, the romance. The Mallory's in your Tennyson's and all that stuff, and they're suddenly wearing this kind of um, medieval armour. No, oh, they're great, aren't they? So here's my new friend Alan in Spirit of Awen, and we're still in the Fustrad in Caerleon. 25, 26 years, something like yeah, that. The, the shop has been here. So. Oh, you got some fantastic stuff. Can we look inside? Most certainly. This is what catches my immediately the sword and that. This is Arthurian Corner. This is the Arthurian Corner, yeah, yeah. Yeah, as it's just some of the wonderful stuff in Alan's shop here, and I'll be doing another video on that. And the great stuff around the Fulham. Get down there, brilliant for Welsh history, promoting Welsh uh, tourism, the whole stuff. This is people getting up and doing it, and I love the project. So please get involved, follow more adventures like this coming up soon, interviews with Alan, and until the next time, Heduch! Ah, thank you for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed that and found it informative. Britain's Hidden History Group has so much more going on on our YouTube channel. The one you're watching now, there's a live stream, 8 o'clock UK time every Sunday. We speak to people like Wilson and Blackett, reprint their old books and help produce new ones. We go researching to the tops of mountains, all the way down to the bottoms of caves. Busily recording the books, you can listen to them as well, and looking at mysteries, and working out what we're not being taught in schools, and preserving it, because the physical and written evidence is rapidly disappearing. You can also find out how to read ancient writing and hieroglyphs using the Welsh language, it's amazing! It's a Facebook group where this is being discussed, along with a website you can buy the books and help us. Also, as you can see, there's now a Patreon page where just a few pounds a month will make all the difference in trying to keep the project going and preserve this history for future generations and also to find out for ourselves what is going on, what is Britain's hidden history. So until the next time, Heather!